chauffeur Brit and babysitter for me and human incubator I have many titles we're on the way to my endoscopy should be interesting still don't want to go I'm looking forward to seeing you stoned the procedure is done at St. Anne Hospital. I keep forgetting that St. Anne even has a hospital. But uh, we're going to St. Anne Hospital. And uh, they're going to sedate me a little bit. And uh, put a, a camera down into my stomach. To see if we can figure out what's going on in there. I think I'm fine. But they want to check and make sure. Better safe than sorry. This sort of came from, uh, well, for the last couple of years. It comes and goes. There's like a weird lump feeling in my back around where my right kidney would be but apparently my kidneys are fine everything looks fine in there they can't figure out what might be causing it and to be on the safe side we're gonna go and uh, make sure it's nothing that I should be worried about rule one more thing out because yeah, when you talk to people and say you feel like you have a lump people start getting nervous the C word is thrown around yeah but I don't think it's I don't think it's that I think it's uh I think it's muscles. That's what I think they are. I think my muscles get tightened and I don't stretch properly all the time and I don't see a chiropractor enough and a massage therapist maybe it would help. But I think that's what it is, but uh, they you know, gotta make sure it's not the big one. We're very lucky to live in Canada because guess what? We leave the hospital every time without a bill. Yeah. We can go as many times as we want. We can go every single day. I would not encourage that unless it's something serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't be a hypochondriac, but it's great. You just get to go. Yeah. Has its flaws, but I just can't imagine. Like we have, uh, you know, we know several people in the U.S. and they talk to us sometimes about medical bills and stuff, and it's just such a foreign concept. Like, it really is. I forget that it even exists. What? It's, and they're huge bills, like huge. I just don't understand how that's even an issue no. as a Canadian. I don't see how that could be a partisan thing, or that how that could be. Because we're all gonna be there. We're all gonna get old. It's not just some of us it's all of us and I love everybody's argument you should see the taxes they pay yeah you do realize that that doesn't all go towards health care right <laughs> yeah our taxes aren't that bad well they're high they're like, high yeah you know, we could lower them in some places so that's we're working on that but we have peace of mind but I'm okay paying a little bit more to make sure that when I get old I'm taken care of get older or develop a health problem when you're young yeah or deliver a baby yeah. We're going to walk out of there without a bill. Yeah, you don't get a bill for delivering babies in mm -hmm. Canada. That's ridiculous. What in the world? Who would charge someone for having a baby bringing a new life into this world? I just gave you another future taxpayer, but you're <laughs> going to give me a bill. What? <laughs> yeah, we don't understand that, but... Uh, I've never been to this hospital. I wonder what it looks like. It looks like a tiny little building. Doesn't look like a hospital at all. It looks more like a medical clinic. It looks like an old folks home, or, or pardon me, a seniors complex? Is that what they're called now? I don't know. When I was growing up, they were called old folks home. Sorry yeah, if that's old folks politically home. incorrect. <laughs> I don't think anyone cares about that one. Are you sure? Oh, There's someone. Gonna be someone will be offended. So this is it. Medical center. They call it a hospital. Yeah, St. Anne Hospital. This Park is where it happens. Staff parking over there. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It has. Oh, I think the handicap sign is just up there. Okay, all right, all right. This is different. I parked on the street when I came, or my sister parked on the street when she brought me here for a medical procedure. Well, you're pregnant. You can park where you want. Is that how that works? We get to park in the special spots at Superstore and Walmart now. The pink spots. The pink spots for... Fat barbecuing man spots. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like parking up that close anyway because people always ding your doors then, but it's nice to have the option. If she's feeling really tired or something, we can just go park right in the front, the special spot. Uh, you know what, it's not so much if I'm tired. If it's icy out, I prefer a closer spot. Yeah, uh, that's true. I... Winter scares me a little bit being pregnant. I'm just extra careful. I, I take tiny little itty bitty old lady steps. Oh, I need a mask, I guess. Oh, yeah. Well, to the hospital. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. I'm going to hand the camera to Britt and see what she uh, 
See what she captures. It'll be some stimulating entertainment, ladies and yes, gentlemen. From this point on, I am not responsible for anything that I say or do. That's right. She's my she's my my husband sitter. That's right. Well, I just got the uh, the message. I'm done her. I think it meant I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little loopy right now uh yeah so anyways josh's procedure is done i don't know how long he'll have to stay there in recovery but uh yeah i ran to town ran some errands got dog food got filled up with gas while he was in there it was a very short procedure it was like i think it was like 20 minutes from the last time he messaged me till he messaged me that he was done so that's really good Oh, he's messaging some more. Let's see what strange things he's saying to me. I Gielin get a, their camera ready. <laughs> um, something about getting the camera ready. Well, we're ready for him. <laughs> Took way too long to type that. Oh, that was all in English and proper grammar. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Poor guy. I don't think Josh has ever been under sedation of any kind or had an IV put in. Um, he was sweating bullets, apparently, while they were putting in the IV. Poor guy. I understand. I had my first ever procedure. No, wisdom teeth. My third procedure was at this hospital, and it was the most invasive I'd ever had, and I was... I was pretty nervous. I don't think there's ever going to be a procedure that I would be not nervous for. So I get it. I'm not really making fun of them. I, I get it. It's, it's unnerving knowing that you're going to be sedated and vulnerable and something could go wrong with any kind of procedure. So, but hopefully he'll be okay. I'll let him sleep for the afternoon while I go to a dentist appointment. And then, um, I'll wake him up because we're going to go see baby. My 20 week ultrasound isn't quite complete. So at 21 weeks here, we're going for the second part because baby's stubborn and curled up into a pretzel. So we couldn't see his or her spine. So round two of pictures. Let's go get Josh soon. Battle scars. <laughs> it went great. More oh, great actually. The worst part for me was when after they put in the IV, not during it, but it burnt a lot for some reason when they put the IV in. And uh, after the nurse left the little area that I was in, I started started to sweat, and then it got super nauseous for like two minutes. I thought I was gonna throw up, but there was nothing in my stomach to throw up. And then suddenly, just like that, my switch was turned off and I was fine. It just took a little while because they're running a little bit behind. They said that they're uh, catching up from all the endoscopies that were delayed due to COVID. So this is all this doctor was doing all day. He's doing eight to 10, I think, per day. I feel fine now. It's been half an hour. So I was a little loopy when I first woke up. I tried messaging her. <laughs> I wrote it out like 15 times. I couldn't write the sentence proper. And the one I read to you guys, he just thought, nailed it! Yeah. <laughs> what did I say? Where's my phone? Get old, get her. I was saying that I'm done. Get the camera ready. Because I was feeling just, woo! I thought it would be really great footage because I thought it would last a while. It didn't last very long. By the time she came into the room like 10 minutes later, I was pretty much all, it was pretty much all worn off already. And now I just feel slow. But, you know, I'm a little slow to begin with, so... Kind of like you had a couple too many beers the night before, and you're just like... Yeah. yeah! Yeah, almost like a, a hangover, but no pain. I don't have a headache or anything. It's just... Just the fuzziness. Just calm and chill. So we go going home and watch TV, and... I'm not supposed to eat bad foods, but I'm gonna go get some McDonald's. Well, you deserve a treat, but we gotta make sure that to sleep for at least two hours after. So the message I sent her, uh, I Geelan get boo camera ready, lol. 
And I read that over like 15 times, like over and over. I'm like, yep, that's the one. And I hit send. <laughs> like, that's... Yes, it took way too long to type that. And then that was me. But it didn't last long. So, uh, sorry guys. I thought that uh, I'd be a little more entertaining, entertaining after that. But uh, I was going to open you with me too. That's yeah. okay. I, I got some entertainment in the room while he was getting dressed. And I got to watch him rip off the stickers, the heart monitor stickers. Oh, okay, I got to <laughs> oh, show Kelly you. Oh, Kelly Clarkson! <laughs> I can show you one because I got a lot of chest hair all of a sudden. And here's one. There used to be hair there. <laughs> Not no more. It bled a little bit. Yeah, it bled a little bit. <laughs> Can't imagine guys who wax their chests. It's definitely a 40 year old virgin moment. Yeah. Too <laughs> bad we were in a hospital or else you could have screamed, oh, Kelly Clarkson. If I would have thought of it, I totally would have. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That was pretty entertaining. Yeah, you've gotten really hairy, but only since you started balding. Yeah, I'm losing hair on my head. I need to cut my hair. But you can see I'm losing hair on top of my head. It's, it's all moved down to my chest. Ever since then, it's just migrated. Yeah. I used to have just a little, little tuft of chest hair. And then... And now you got a full carpet. Well, chest carpet. It was around the time when I started flat bedding. That'll <laughs> grow hair on your chest. Makes you a man. <laughs> I'm gonna head home to the dogs now. Grab some food and uh well oh, we actually have a couple more appointments today yet. We have she has a dentist appointment, I'm gonna hang out at home I think. And then she has uh ultrasound. And the way I'm feeling now I think it'll be just fine for me to tag along and uh they're gonna do a little uh check out the tour. baby's spine and then a little tour of the baby. Yeah, because they couldn't get the picture of the spine last time, so I gotta be home for this time and see the baby moving around and stuff. It's great. Yep. Oh. Baby doesn't like McDonald's. I do, but baby doesn't. So, Wendy's. It's the one fast food restaurant that, a burger restaurant that the baby likes. Mm. My goodie bag. Paul's a good boy. <laughs> you, Bruce. you done did good. You listened to your wife, so you earned a treat. And everyone, including all of you in the comment section, was right. It's nothing to worry about. Don't even remember it. I remember being rolled into the procedure room. They put those uh, like things in my nose. Nose cannula. Nose cannula. Yeah, they smelt like rubber. We made a joke about it that I'll get used to it right away. And then lights were out. The next time I opened my eyes, I was back in the recovery room there. I don't even have a sore throat. Nothing. It's, it was fine. I didn't die. So that's good news. Good news. There'll be another vlog tomorrow. <laughs> I'll take good care of you, I promise. I won't be able to go back to work till tomorrow afternoon at the earliest. So uh, I'll let dispatch know and see if they got something from. I'm sure they'll find something. I might run out to Kenora tonight and pick up in the morning, but that's just one option. We'll see what they have for me. Since American Thanksgiving is on Thursday, uh, we can't deliver anywhere in the US on Thursday, so I might just be staying in Canada this week. I was really hoping that that would be a lot more entertaining for you guys. Because <laughs> when Britt got sedated for her egg retrieval during the IVF process, I think they gave her a little bit of a different cocktail. Probably a little bit more intense because it's more of an invasive procedure, obviously, than mine. But uh, it was such a strange experience. There's like a half hour of my life that's just gone. So. They got me all ready, they got the IV hooked in. I still got a little scar there. I don't know if they did it a little rough or wrong, but uh, yeah, it burnt. Like I was saying, it burnt going in. And then uh, I got real sweaty for some reason. I started sweating like crazy, I got super nauseous. I thought I was gonna throw up. I started dry heaving a little bit. 
And then like two minutes later, perfectly fine. So I, I don't know what that was all about, but uh, that was the worst part of it. And then uh, they got me ready, they got the IV drip going, and then they wheeled me into the procedure room, right? And it's kind of crazy because, you know, you're in this room all just with the doctor or the whatever the, the he's not a surgeon, is he a surgeon? But with the doctor and two nurses and, you know, you're like the center of attention. There's like this big massive room and you're right in the middle and all these machines all over you everywhere. It's kind of intimidating, but whatever. Uh, that part didn't freak me out. And they put that that uh, nose thing in, you know, the thing that goes in your nose, blows oxygen into your nose. And the last thing I remember is they, they put this thing on and then they told me they're gonna give me something to bite on so that my mouth stays open while they put the tube down. I don't remember that at all, putting, putting it in my mouth. I just remember them telling me that and then they put that nose thing on me and then I remember saying, oh, it smells like rubber. And they said, yeah, and sort of chuckled a little bit and then Boop, I was out. No idea. No, I don't even remember closing my eyes. I don't even know if my eyes were closed. Was I like staring blindly at the ceiling? I don't know what happened. No idea. After I said that it smells like rubber, I can remember them sort of laughing about it. And then I opened my eyes and I was in the recovery room. And the nurse was there. Uh, she took out my IV. Uh, and... Uh, and then suddenly Britt was there. Oh yeah, I sent Britt a message. That's right, I woke up and first thing I did was I grabbed my phone. I tried to message her, because I was super loopy when I first woke up. I said, this is gonna be great footage, right? So I was trying to tell her, bring the camera, bring the camera, this is gonna be awesome. Bring the camera, I couldn't type it out. And then I read, I explained, <coughs> explained it to you already. I read the sentence over and I'm like, yep, that makes sense, sent it. And then I guess she started coming in and by the time they let her into the recovery room with me, uh, I was totally recovered already. I was pretty much like 90%, just a little bit slow. So, and we can't film in there either. They have big signs all over the place, no cameras, no filming. So that sort of, that sort of uh, messed up my, my footage that I was hoping to get of myself all loopy. I thought that for sure, like, like she came into the recovery room because sedation affects people differently and some people it affects a lot more afterwards and sometimes you gotta get led back to the car so you don't get lost or something. I, I, I thought that's how I was gonna be. I was kinda hoping that that's how I was gonna be because we were gonna get back to the car and it was gonna make a great vlog. No, apparently my body handles sedation very well and uh, yeah, by the time we got to the car I was pff, almost perfectly normal. Just a little fuzzy. That was kind of disappointing, but I guess good at the same time. Yeah, that was my story. It was, uh, it was very interesting. My first time ever being sedated like that. Huh. So as you could tell, uh, I, I wasn't allowed to drive for uh, 24 hours after that. So I was in the passenger seat, uh, but I did tag along to the ultrasound later on that day, that afternoon. And we got to see baby. We got to see him or her moving around there, kicking up a storm like crazy, and uh, getting bigger and bigger. I'm so excited. Oh yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> Cause when she first got into the room, I guess I was a little bit out of it still, but she wasn't allowed to film. And uh, I was so happy as soon as I saw her walk around the corner and into my little area, my recovery area there, I was all excited. And I <laughs> announced to the whole ward, that's my wife! And I pointed at her something, that's my baby! <laughs> so everybody knew that, that was my wife and that was my baby. Yeah. I'm like, she's pregnant! <laughs> ah, wish we could have gotten that on film at least, but whatever. Rules are rules. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, but that's, I guess that's life. Eh. At least we could go home without a bill, right? <laughs> I wonder how much an endoscopy would cost. For my friends down south, I'm, I'm always very fascinated by the way your healthcare works. And we don't mean to criticize it at all. Like at the beginning of the vlog, we were sort of, like we're honestly confused. And honestly blown away, like I don't understand why it's like, and why I don't understand why it's an issue people fight over 
and why it's an issue, like part like political. Why is it political? We're all human. We're all gonna get old. So I don't understand that, but don't take it as a criticism. Like that's your system. That's the way you guys have it. Uh, I would like to understand a little bit though, because I had an endoscopy done. They called it a gas gastropy, gastropy, gastropy. I'm not a doctor, I'm a trucker. Anyways, how much would that have cost in the US? Say uh, you don't have any health insurance, okay? I know that you guys have health insurance through your work, a lot of it, and some things are covered and some things aren't. Uh, say you're not insured for an endoscopy. How much would that cost? Let me know down below in the comment section if you actually know. Uh, if you're just guessing, like, just let me know you're guessing. But if you actually know the answer, I'd like to know, have some honest answers. Maybe someone's in the medical field down there. Uh, what would my bill have been when I went home without insurance? Because my bill was exactly zero. And I know we all got to pay for it through our taxes. I, I know that. But like I said earlier too, I'm okay paying it a little more because I'm going to get old one day. I'm a pretty healthy guy. I don't really have any big health issues right now. But I'm getting older and one day every single one of us is going to get old and we're going to develop problems and we're going to need a doctor, we're going to need a hospital, we're going to need treatment for one thing or another. So... I don't I feel it's a very patriotic thing like it's a bit it's it's the one thing that all Canadians can agree on it doesn't matter if you're a conservative if you're a new democrat if you're a liberal if you're a people's party person uh if you're a Quebec Bloc Quebecois person whatever party you belong to there's one thing we all agree on is that we all want to take care of each other's health together I'll chip in a little bit, you'll chip in a little bit, and hey, when I get old, I'll be taken care of, right? It doesn't cover everything. It's not, it's definitely not perfect. There's, there's a lot of flaws to it. Like, there is no perfect system out there. But I'm thankful for it. I am thankful for what we have. We need more doctors. We need more nurses. And we need constant improvements. Everybody's got a little bit of a different idea of how to make it better. That's that's sort of like the, the one thing, because in you know, US you have two main parties, right? Democrat, Republican. In Canada you have like five, I think. You have uh, the Liberal Party, which is in power right now. Ugh. Not, not my party, but uh, they're in power right now with a minority government. They're in a coalition with the New Democrats. Uh, and then there's the Conservative Party, and then there's there's the People's Party. So. From left to right, if you guys are political, from left to right, NDP, Liberal, Conservative, People's Party. And then Bloc Quebecois is in there for some reason. They're a separatist party that want to break apart the country and the, the entire point of their existence is to break Quebec off from Canada. That's a whole different story for a different day and a different channel. I, I'm not a political channel. So I'm just trying to explain to my American friends how it sort of works. Here. So there's a bunch of parties, right? They all agree on healthcare. No one's ever gonna to touch that. They all agree on that. But they all do have their different ideas of how to make healthcare better in their in their view, right? It's one thing we can all come, it's a very patriotic thing. It's one thing we can all come together on. We're all gonna get sick one day and we're all gonna be there for each other. Thanks for watching today, listening to me rant. You guys are all awesome. And I'll see you in my next video.